I got called out for being wrong in a video on async, await, and JavaScript. I then admitted I was wrong and made a video about being wrong and now have realized I wasn't really wrong, but I want to add some clarifications for how promise that all works in JavaScript. So this is one of the weirdest videos I think I've ever recorded. So I want to uh, kind of explain what happened. I recorded a video and released a video a few days ago called uh, tips for working with async await in JavaScript. You can check that out out there. And this got into converting from uh, promises with dot then and dot catch to using async await. And I started to get into uh, if you make multiple async requests in a row, instead of awaiting them sequentially, you can uh, wrap them or put them into a promise at all. Uh, and um, I said, let them run in parallel and get these performance benefits. And the performance benefits are still real. Um, I'll show you that with a hands on demo here in a second. But I think there may have been confusion with the word uh, parallel, and that's getting really technical into the details. Anyway, so I got a comment. We can actually uh, take a look at this now about uh, about the, my explanation of promise at all. And uh, the comment here says about promise at all. In reality, uh, that's not run in parallel. It will do the exact same thing uh, before you actually use promise at all, which is run one and then the other. And I responded back with, uh, well, that's actually not how it works. Um, it is intended to give you these performance benefits of being able to run in parallel. I'm going to change that word here in a second. So don't don't at me for that one yet. And then uh, the person came back and said, JavaScript is single threaded uh, the event loop. So promise at all is like doing a for of loop and keeps the order. Uh, and then there's some other benefits, but basically saying like it doesn't run these things in parallel. And I think parallel is the wrong word, but it does do basically what I interpreted it to do. But as he added that comment, I started to really like kind of uh, rethink my understanding of the event loop in JavaScript and asynchronous JavaScript and overthought it to the point where I created a video explaining why I was wrong, uh, apologizing to him uh, and thanking him for or him or her for providing the feedback and then have since realized that I was wrong in saying I was wrong and I was more or less right, although you could get really specific about some of the details anyway. I want to add some clarity around how promise that all works and the performance benefits. And I'll show you that in a second. Before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about how the event loop works in JavaScript. So when you're doing things in JavaScript, uh, basically there's this kind of backlog of here's the things that uh, the event loop needs to do. It's the event queue. So those are things that need to be executed. So the event loop is kind of just constantly looking, Hey, is there anything for me to do? Is there anything for me to do? Um, if there's nothing to do, it, it doesn't have anything to do, but as stuff is there, it will go and do it. And uh, what happens is when we make fetch requests, um, JavaScript is single threaded. So we don't have control over creating additional threads in JavaScript or anything like that ourselves. But when we make a fetch request, what it actually does is kind of hands that off to the lower level C, C++ stuff and lets it take care of that um, outside of the scope of the main thread in JavaScript. So I have the ability to initiate a fetch request, not await the response yet, let that thing kick off, let it run behind the scenes, not affect the main thread, the main loop or the yeah, the main thread in, uh, in JavaScript, the single thread and continue about my uh, regular work until that thing comes back. And when it does, what happens is that low level code will then kind of add, uh, add something to the event queue to say, hey, this thing actually has come back. Now you should act on it. And that's the way that the asynchronous uh, workings of JavaScript work, if that makes sense. So because of that, um, although it may be true that you can't necessarily run things in parallel specifically, the point of what I was trying to get to was that those things could run um, and not be dependent upon each other before running the next one. So let's actually take a look at, at what this looks like. In this example, I'll include a link to this in the video, uh, but this is a code pen where I've got two different functions, one where it will load data using promise.all, and then one where it will uh, load data doing a for loop with an await inside of it. So these are both requesting from uh, the JSON placeholder typey code uh, dummy API. And there's an array I create up here uh, with 100 numbers in it. And then for each one, I just iterate through basically and request. I want the first item, the second, the third, all the way up to 100. So in the regular load data, uh, that's in a for loop and it does an await. Uh, as it does the fetch. I'm not actually getting the response here because I don't really care about it. What that means is it's going to finish executing that entire request. Like it's going to wait for that fetch to finish and come back before it then iterate, iterates through the loop to do another one. That means they all happen sequentially. They all kind of depend on the previous one being done before. So I've got a, a start date and an end date here for timing, and then I'll log out the difference. 
If I then change this to a promise.all version, and this is where I take that array of numbers and I basically map them to an array of promises. So for each one of the numbers in this original array, I call fetch to that URL, which returns a promise. So I'm creating this array of promises here. Now with that array of promises, I can pass it to promise.all, pass it inside of this parameter here, and then await that response. So what promise.all is gonna do is give me back an array that includes all the results from all those different promises. Key thing about promise at all that other people called out as well is if any one of those promises rejects, if any one of those promises go wrong, it's gonna short circuit the, the rest of them. That means that uh, if one of them fails, it's not gonna waste its time doing the rest of them. So we're kind of betting on the fact, or we're like using this in the uh, knowing that we want either all or nothing. If one of them fails, they basically all fail in our head. So this is uh, just kind of a concise syntax, a nicety in JavaScript to be able to do that functionality. But since we are kicking off these fetch requests, which then return promises, and we have this array of promises, all of these fetch requests have basically kicked off. So we say, hey, go ahead and kick this thing off. We don't wait for it to come back, then we kick off the next one. Which means more in my definition, those things are able to run uh, not in order of each other, but able to kind of run simultaneously in, in some capacity and then come back with all those results. Now, I think the more appropriate word for this is that they run concurrently. You can go and look up the definitions here, but concurrently means that they're basically all able to make progress relatively at the same time, not that they're running in parallel exactly. Anyway, the lower level stuff takes care of that. So with this promise.all, I just pass it in those promises. All those requests have already gotten kicked off and then I get all the results, which means that this is gonna be significantly faster, especially if there's 100 requests. This is a little bit exaggerated. It's gonna be significantly faster than waiting for each one to return completely before moving on to the next. And if we run this, I guess I can, uh, I just need to change something for it to uh, kind of auto rerun. We should see the log statements come out here. Here is the promise at all, it's 346 milliseconds. And then notice it took a couple seconds. At 4,053 milliseconds, we get the results back from promise um, from not using promise at all. So you can see in this case, I was I was correct in the sense that this does have performance implications of being able to kick those things off and wait for all of them to come back instead of doing all of them sequentially one after another. So I think for the most part, I kind of had the explanation or at least in my head, correct. Then I got these comments on uh, on the YouTube video and I started to really rethink stuff that I honestly knew fairly well but it was a good exercise for me uh, because I then needed to reassure myself that I uh, understood what I thought by going and doing some research. And I think that turned out to be a pretty good kind of learning opportunity for me regardless. I think like I should be paying attention to comments, especially if people call something out and say that it's wrong, but I also need to kind of trust my instinct a little bit more sometimes instead of backtracking as quickly, uh, maybe trust my instinct and, um, and just kind of go with what, um, I think I know while also doing some research to confirm. So anyway, I hope that I uh, hope this video is helpful for people that are interested in how promise.all works and how the event loop works in JavaScript. Hopefully, if you watch that previous video, it gives a little bit of clarification on how this stuff works and it um, and it clears things up. So if you have any other uh, questions, just let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to try and clear them up even more. Uh, thanks for sticking with uh, these kind of interesting videos. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time.